Raw 2. Now, WWE Raw 2 is not developed by Ukes. I believe this one was just developed by THQ and the Xbox, the uh, Microsoft Studios. Let me take a look here. So, I only see THQ and Microsoft on the box. I do not believe this is the same the same exact group of develop, developers, coders, programmers that worked on the wrestling games of the time. Now, this game came out in 2003. I think this game out this game actually came out before um, Here Comes the Pain, but after Shut Your Mouth. Um. So again, Raw WWF Raw was a quote unquote failure. And the SmackDown series on PlayStation was such a huge hit that this game just got no attention. But Raw 2 is a good game. Now, should you buy an Xbox or an Xbox 360 in order to play this? And I'm playing this on my 360. Again, this is another game like NFL 2K5. It is backwards compatible for the 360. So if you buy a 360, you can play this game. All, all you're going to do is going to do a brief update. It's going to take two seconds. Like, you'll put the disc in, it'll update for two seconds, and then you'll never have to do that again. Um, I haven't even tried the Royal Rumble or the Tournament mode or even Kino. But I, I've done uh, Create a Superstar. No, I'm lying. I did not do Create a Superstar. I did Edit. I did Create a Superstar, but I just edited Triple H. And then I also did... Uh, I've done the uh, Season mode, which is basically career mode where you but it, it's similar to the smackdown series where you're gonna go in and you can play at you can change your wrestler and any t you can change your wrestler before every show you can ch you can do multiple things for the show like uh and you know what instead of talking about it, i'm show you. I, I can i can just show you really quickly and then i'll back out and do an exhibition and show you the characters or whatever so what you do is you go into a show and what it's going to say is it's going to ask you, do you want to continue the game? Yeah, of course, you need to continue. Um, now here you pick your wrestler. So I'm going to do, um, I could do The Rock, I could do Undertaker, I could do Triple H. Now this, like I said, this game came out before Here Comes the Pain. Because Hulk Hogan's still in the game. Now, Jeff Hardy was removed. So, Matt Hardy's in the game, not Jeff Hardy. But they, but RVD is still in the game. Even though he, I believe, was he removed from Here Comes the Pain? Uh, I might be wrong about that. But Hulk Hogan's still in the game. Uh, Scott Hall was not in this game, but Kevin Nash is. I think x pac might be in this game. Or is he? No, he's not. Um, but Scott Steiner's in this game. Let, let's look at the roster too, like, one minute. So The Rock, Undertaker, Triple H, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, RVD, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, Booker T, Goldust, Kane, Hurricane Helms, Big Show, Rikishi, Matt Hardy, A-Train. I don't know why they put wrestlers in this order. They're not even in a particular order, but, yeah. Uh... Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, uh, Chavo Guerrero, Bu uh, Bubba Ray Dudley, uh, Spike Dudley, Billy Gunn, Chuck Palumbo, Rico, John Cena. Uh, so this is actually the first game John Cena's in, because remember, he's not in uh, Shut Your Mouth. Rey Mysterio, Edge, Lance Storm, Christian, Test, William Regal, um... I'm sorry, I'm just going to lower the volume on this a little bit so that, in case that music is getting annoying for you. Uh, let's go back to full screen. So I remember I'm recording this off my computer, everyone. Um, so yeah, Christian, Test, William Regal, um, Jamie Noble, Shannon Moore, Tajiri, Billy Kidman, Tori Wilson, Terry, Lita, 
Nydia, I think this is the only game Nydia's ever been in. Uh, Trish Stratus, Stacey Cabler, Molly Holly, Jazz, Steven Richards, Chris Nowinski. I think he's in Here Comes the Pain, and that might be his last game. Uh, Victoria, Jacqueline, and then on the fourth page, <laughs> just happen to have Stone Cold Steve Austin, Scott Steiner, Batista, Devon Dudley, Tommy Dreamer. Um, this is the first game he's in because he wasn't in Shut Your Mouth. So this is actually his first entry into WWE games. Uh, Mark Henry, Crash Holly, last game he's ever in. Uh, Hardcore Holly, Goldberg, Bradshaw, Randy Orton. Now they have Bradshaw, but they don't have Farouk. Um, for, uh, you know, take that for what it is. Randy Orton, uh, this is his, now he was in Shut Your Mouth, I apologize, so, so it's not his debut. Uh, Val Venus, Stephanie McMahon, Shawn Michaels, Rhino, and Kevin Nash. So what you have here is a very, very, very good roster. This is a, an awesome hybrid of Obviously, this is a this is the meat of the ruthless aggression era. This is year two of ruthless aggression, the first full year technically of ruthless aggression, and you have a good carryover of Attitude Era, WCW, and ECW guys. But you're also getting the new generation of WWE guys who are going to take over, like a John Cena, like a Brock Lesnar, like a Randy Orton, like a Dave Batista. Um, couple of notes about the roster in this game. Um, all characters have an alternate uh, attire. Now you can't, in season mode, you can't select it. But in the exhibition, I'll show you, all you have to do is hit X and you can do their, choose their second appearance. And you can, you can edit their appearances. So you can edit their first and second appearance in the create a superstar uh, area, which is very, very cool. And what that does, that allows you to, to change um, change their their coats, their jackets, uh, I'm sorry, their, their pants, their shoes, all kinds of stuff. It's not a superstar thread edit, it's a legit edit, uh, which is very, very cool. So yeah, so this is season mode. So let's go ahead and I'll just pick somebody to show you like how, how a show works. So let's do, I'll be Goldberg, and we'll go ahead and start the show. So we're on SmackDown. So I don't know if I'll even have a match with him. All right, so this is the format for every show. So there's four shows and then a pay-per-view. And when you play the pay-per-view, you open up that arena to play with an exhibition. So, and all you have to do is go through the participation. So. I'm Goldberg, so if Goldberg has a match, I can't do anything with that match other than play, right? So that's this. Um, all these other matches, though, I have a few options. So, for instance, uh, Chuck Palumbo, Stone Cold. When I hit select on it, I can do nothing. I can rest, which is kind of silly because it's basically the same thing as doing nothing. I can surprise attack. I can interfere in this match. I can steal, meaning steal one of the wrestlers' attires from their locker room, which is what I use in Create a Superstar to, to use their attire, right? I can set a trap, like setting a, uh, something to fall on them or whatever. Um, I can manipulate them, like talk to their partner or their manager or them. I can encourage them just to gain their friendship. I can call them out, like go to the middle of the ring, and call out a wrestler, get them to come out, which to get them fired up to create a match with them later or start a fight. Complain, I actually don't know what happens if you complain, I haven't tried that. Select a manager, this I also haven't tried. Try to break up a tag team or a manager and a wrestler. So what's the point of this, you say? So number one, it makes going through the mat, going through the the season kind of fun because you can mess around with different wrestlers. You could change your wrestler every show, and then you could mess with other wrestlers to create stories, to create rivalries, to create matchups. What'll happen is the GM in the middle of a show will actually come out uh, at some point 
uh, when there's, and they'll announce a match for the next upcoming show. And some of that will be dependent on the actions that you take. Um, another thing it does, by having a season mode where you don't pick one wrestler, if I pick Goldberg and then I'm really in the mood to play as Triple H, I can just switch to be Triple H. I don't have to go and be in, quit my season mode. I can keep going. You know, it makes it more fun actually to go through the season because it's like I could stick with one wrestler or I could go ahead and, and flip between different wrestlers uh, just to, you know, get some uh, replayability out of, out of the mode and also to like um, to see like different wrestlers moves and to help me play through to unlock everything. Because sometimes it gets a little boring when you're just playing this one. Like, I'll be honest, like, even in 2K16, I love Stone Cold. But I'll tell you, by the end of that mode, I didn't want, want to play a Stone Cold again. I was like, how many times in a row am I going to be Stone Cold, right? It gets annoying. Like, it's kind of cool to have different wrestlers and have options. Um, also, this is like a blank slate, in a sense. It's not really based on tr the true storylines of the time. You know, that's a hit or miss depending on what your feelings are towards that that style of story mode. But um, back in the, at this time period, both shut your mouth and here comes the pain. They were sort of in and out of using the real life storyline and using things that were um, just happening. Like, for example, in the older games, they tried to build storylines based on real rivalries at the time. So like the DX, uh, it's Triple H versus The Rock and Stone Cold. And in this case, in this game, uh, they really get away from that format where they want to focus on you being able to kind of create the, the robberies, create the issues, and really go from there. Um, which I, I think is pretty cool, to be honest. Um, so you see Goldberg, Bob Van Dam. Actually, what I'm going to do is in this, I'm going to select... Uh, I'm going to call out go, uh, Booker T. Wait. Yeah, I'm going to call out Booker T. Um, so that's it. And once you select everything you want to do, I'm only going to do one thing here. And just hit start. It's going to say, sure you want to go to the next screen? You say yes. And that's it. Um, you can simulate through the matches that you're not playing, um, but you do have to at least go through the screen. You cannot just, um, like skip through in one heartbeat. So, you know, you may get tired of like, like having to do that, uh, which I guess I understand, but it's not that bad to be honest. Like I said, this is miles and light years above WWF Raw, the first one that came out for the Xbox. It's such a dramatic improvement. In my humble opinion, this is the greatest improvement from one wrestling game to the next within the same series I've ever seen. Um, and, you, and you haven't seen the gameplay yet, so you might say, oh, the gameplay wasn't that great. You know, the gameplay, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's not as fast as Shut Your Mouth or Here Comes the Pain. It may not even be as fast as the GameCube's WWE... Uh, WrestleMania 18, but I'm going to say this, it's not horrible, um, and it's actually kind of fun, like, the punches and kicks are fast enough, uh, the moves are fine, like, are there things about the game that seem a little off, like the chairs you know, behind the announce table are, are blue and white instead of, like, all black and stuff like that, yeah, but the game, the game actually plays okay, um, I, I think it's one of those things where the first game was so bad from a gameplay perspective and options perspective that the style of the game almost got ruined just because of the association. Um, it's If you think about if you played like No Mercy and WrestleMania, which are another, those are games that get quoted a lot by people who never really played it. I have those games right in front of me actually for the 64, which I don't even play that much, uh, surprisingly. Um, even though I have them and I, and I do like them. And WCW, NWO Revenge, and World Tour, etc. But those, this game actually tries to use a similar model. Uh, they have a momentum meter on the bottom. And, and remember, this is THQ. So it's not like, the, oh, this is a terrible developer and didn't know what to do. No, this is the same general developer that made all the wrestling games people love. 
Um, they use a similar spirit meter, essentially, to get up to your finisher. Um, is the gameplay equal to Here Comes the Pain? No. There, it is missing blood, so I guess WWE Today would like that. Um, but look at... Ah, oh, this roster is incredible. Look at that. Rhino, Undertaker versus Albert, John Cena. Uh, there's nothing like the ruthless aggression here, man. I, I love the Attitude Era. I mean, the only guy who's missing from this that really hurts... I could have you could have had in this game. You could have kept Raven in the game from Here Comes the Pain because this is like right after that, and he's still in the company. And I would have loved to have Bret Hart as a as an unlockable, but at the time Bret was on the outs with the company, um, so I understand why he wasn't in this game. But man, I mean, I I guess I could create him. Oh, here you go. See a match announcement. So you see because of something that's happened. Uh, Either, either general manager, in this case it's Stephanie, because she was the general manager of SmackDown at the time. She's going to come out and she's going to say, you know, you know, she's going to give a Madison National. Now, there's actually no audio from it. She doesn't say it, but it's usually you. So there you go. She's booking me and Goldberg in a match with The Rock. It'll probably be at Raw or it'll be at the next pay-per-view. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Bret Hart's the only guy missing. Now, I have WWE 13, WWE 2K14, WWE 2K16 um, for my Xbox 360 that I play, right? So I don't need this game to have Bret Hart. I, if I'm in the mood to play as Bret Hart, I can play with him in my other wrestling games. But, yeah, I, I would have loved... Oh, and SmackDown vs. Raw 2000, uh, 2008, 2009... Um, so yeah, I, I would have loved to have him. I can create him if I really wanted to. Um, but, you know, if I'm in the mood to play with him, the Heart Foundation, etc., like the Attitude Era guys, I'll just, I'll just play the other games that I have. But this is pretty cool. There, there's the alternate attire for Goldberg. So they do a good job of this, like, if you're not in a, in a match, you'll wear your alternate attire. Now this is available to you in the game. Unlike even some current games where alternate attires are just there uh, and then you can't actually play with them, in this game, um, you can play it. All you have to do is hit the X button in Exhibition and it's right there for you, which is very cool, I think, that they just gave it to you. Uh, this was an era where wrestling games, where they would give you alternate attires that were actually cool um, and without any kind of silly unlockables and any of that crap. Like, same thing with uh, Shut Your Mouth and Here Comes the Pain. Uh, they had alternate attires for a lot of the wrestlers in those games. Um, now, I don't... I actually thinking about it. Did Goldberg have an alternate attire and Here Comes the Pain? I don't believe he did. Um, but... Yeah, I don't think he did. So that's an advantage this has over Here Comes the Pain. Because in Here Comes the Pain... If the wrestler doesn't have an alternate attire, you can't add it. But in this game, you can add it. They all have it, but even if they, even if you don't like what they have, you can change it. So that's a big, that's a big difference from even here comes the pain, uh, which came on the PlayStation, where you know again, like whatever, whatever's there. Same thing with shut your mouth. If the alternate attire isn't already there, then you just can't have it. Now again. For me, that's a big deal. I'm huge on alternate attires, entrance music, things like that. Now, on the Xbox original, on the system, if you save music from a CD to the hard drive, you can use the music apparently in the game. Now, what I found is I didn't see that option in the create an entrance to change the music to custom music, but I was told that you could do that. But I was also told that if you're playing this on the 360, that you may not be able to get that to work. So my one pet peeve is I would have loved to be able to add the My Time music to this, but I don't think I can. But Goldberg has his WWE theme in this, which I really like, which is cool. Um, but you can edit everything else as far as like the attire and everything, which I think is so freaking awesome. How about this matchup for a SmackDown? By the way, how cool would it have been if Goldberg and Scott Steiner had gone to SmackDown instead of Raw? 
Like, it would have been so much better for their careers in WWE the first time around if they had just gone to SmackDown. And then if Brock Lesnar maybe had gone to Raw a couple years in and when he got top, you know, to, to flip it, to change it around a little bit. So this is after Devon went from Reverend Devon, and he's switching back to being Devon Dudley. Um, he's on the about to reunite with Bubba because they had separated Batista from him, and Batista had gone to Raw. Batista's old theme is in this too, the theme that they used before, uh, like before and during the beginning of Evolution when he didn't before the uh, Saliva version. Some people don't like the character models in this game. They'll say like they're awkward or maybe like they look thin or something like that. Uh, I think they're okay. I mean, this is what I imagine if w the WCW game that was supposed to come out um, for PS2, which was supposed to be the sequel to WCW Backstage Assault, which was brutal. Obviously, people didn't like that, but I actually did mind the game before that, that by Electronic Arts, and I know that they were working on a game for. PS2, now they canceled that game once WCW got sold to WWF, but they were working on a game for uh, for um, the PlayStation. Now, I don't know if that game was going to come out on Xbox also, um, so I really have no idea. I don't, I don't know if anybody knows that, but I would be curious uh, what was going to happen with that. Um, so the gameplay is the same, so like Bunch of me. So you use the left, the left stick, um, joystick is the sprint button. If you hit A, he does his his grapple. So in this case, it's actually how you hit his spear. Um, A is grapple, and then you just hit hit on the D pad like left, right, or whatever to do a move. Um, if you grapple and then use X, which is the strike button, he'll do like a striking grapple. When you're on the ground, uh, you use A in a direction to do submission. Um, so it, it, the, ga the actual mechanics of the game are similar to No Mercy. It's similar to, uh, even similar to the movie, honestly. Um, Uh, I actually don't mind this game. Like I said, I, I I know people like to make fun of it. Well, I should say this: it's not that people like to make fun of it because it really gets no fanfare. So that's probably the biggest uh, difference. Also, like this game is not known. Like people don't know it. People only know, um, like they know. Here comes the pain. They know. Shut your mouth. They know. Uh, I guess the SmackDown was Raw games, and there's there's strong feelings about those. There's really nothing about this because it's just it's sort of a hidden game. Even the game after this, WrestleMania uh, 21, that game gets a lot of attention also because people didn't like it because they scrapped basically they scrapped the developers of this game in favor of a, a new group that made the next game, and that game was a flop. But at the time, Xbox just didn't have access to the SmackDown series, so they were just trying to come up with something. Now, what happened eventually when you get to the 360 is the 360 gets all the SmackDown vs. Raw games that were still coming out for the PlayStation. So in that case, that, that kind of ended this whole, like, this whole experiment of coming up with a game. But for a while, they had to come up with alternatives. Uh, you know, and this was commonplace, you know, for fa for fans of, you know, yesteryear, you know, we all remember, like, there were a lot of series that would be exclusive to a uh, system for one reason or another. You know, it wasn't like every game just wasn't put out on every single system. So that, w that wasn't like the craziest thing in the world. It was just something that would happen from time to time. Uh, with this military press. The 
you do a strong, like, strike like that, you could, like, damage him in that way. Oh, he countered me a little bit there. Showing a little fight, huh? Oh, you ain't nothing, boy. Oh, I got you now. Whoa! Oh, I had a finisher, too. He's, ah, he's getting his moves in now. Another spear. I hit you with the jackhammer. This thing's over. Oh, he countered it. And jackhammer time. Boom. Also, that you can select from up to four referees. Now, one thing that's missing from this game is there's no... Um, you could beat him up a little bit after the match. There's no outros. There's there's no celebration with music or anything. It's just very strange. Um, so there are some things missing. It's not a perfect game. I don't need to oversell it in that way. Like I said, are you buying a system for this game? No. But if you have an Xbox or you have a 360... Pick up this game, uh, especially if you're a fan of this era. Now, if you're like a modern wrestling fan, don't bother. You're not going to know most of the wrestlers. You're not going to care about the little things that this game does that, that, that the new games don't have because you don't know any better. You don't care about that stuff. But if you're a fan of Ruthless Aggression era, and if you're a fan of the customization that you get from the wrestlers and stuff like that, like, yeah, you're going to want to pick this, this bad boy up. Um, so here we go, New Mercy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change. I was Goldberg. I'm gonna do one more match because you know I, I want to unlock this arena because um, I like this arena from this era. Uh, let's see. I am going to be. This that could be Brock. Maybe Brock Lesnar. Uh, oh, I'm in a tag match, bro. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Weak. Probably the Hulk Hogan, too. Alright. It's kind of weak, but they put me in a tag match with Hogan. So I don't know, this is kind of weak, but whatever. I'm going to show Michaels as the world champ. They always show you the champion arriving in the boat. Um, they do this for every show, I guess. It's like, I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, it's just a repetitive animation they throw in there. I guess back in the day, um, they would typically, they would show you the champion showing up at the building for different shows. So I guess that's realistic for the time. Um, uh, it's not really something they show all the time now. Like, if the champ arrives, they don't really bother to show you that. It's not really something they care or miss too much or whatever. It's just something that they used to do. So this game they made an emphasis to every show. Boy, Big Show's head is huge. His head is monstrous in this game. But yeah, this is uh so this is how you unlock the arenas. You just basically just play the match, play your match. I don't even know if you need to win your match. You just play it. Um so this is uh Actually, another thing about this game, which is a small touch, by the way, the, the sets in the Ruthless Aggression the the nowadays they just have basically uh, computer graphics on the same set, and that's how they change the look. Back then, it was like actually a different set, um, which is why you want to unlock arenas because they're all different. Um, so, Brock Lesnar, you know, he uses the same music he uses now, he's never changed that. Um, but Hulk Hogan, they actually... That music was in, if I'm not mistaken, it was in Shut Your Mouth. Now, he wasn't in Here Comes the Pain, but, you know, that's like licensed music. And WCW had the license for it, but they didn't even use it in their games. Um, but WCW never had the real... Actually, that's not true. They had the real music in... Um, in WCW... 
not Backstage Assault. I can't even think of the name of the game, but the you know, first Electronic Arts game that I had for them. They had the real music for that. But in the N64 THQ games, they never had the real music. Uh, which is just minor thing, but it's just something that they were missing. But when THQ developed the WWF game, uh, WrestleMania 2000, they made sure to put that in the game. And, um, they put all the real music in, which for wrestling fans, I think that was the first time that a game of that level had the real music. Now, I guess WWF Raw, uh, or Raw's War, Warzone, I think it was called, and then uh, whatever the other game was that were made by Acclaim, they had their own music too, but it wasn't as good of a game. Uh, in this game, if you hold the submission for a while, uh, they will counter out of it, so you actually want to like, let go after a little bit, so that you don't give them a chance to get any momentum. So, yeah, Brock is a beast in this game, that's Hollywood Rock. So that's the only rock version that you have in this game, this bad guy rock, which is pretty cool. Oh, let's make sure we get in here. I'm just laying it into the rock here. Overhead press. Boom! Like city boy. You look at that boy. Nice chopping. Oh wow, what a shot. Oh and I bounced. So the thing in this game, when you like go over the top rope, if you if they hit it right, you're gonna hit your head on the mat. It's kind of intense. Like um, the only, another complaint though I have about this game is I can't stand the way that like, the referee counts, dude. They count so fast, like, it's literally like one, two, three, four, five, like, you don't have a set, like, if you're playing exhibition, you gotta turn off that count, because it's very annoying. Like, you're never gonna be able to do anything outside the ring. Uh, it's cool if you're looking for count out victories, but it's very, very frustrating. If you're just playing through a match and you're constantly getting them counted, um, you just can't do anything. Like, so it's just something to be mindful of. So, I don't think you play as Hogan when he comes in the ring. Um, I think you're just playing as the one character. The Rock should tag out, but he's not going to. He's not going to tag you at your bunny. This is also kind of weird because I think Brock is a bad guy at this time. Rock's a bad guy. Hogan's a good guy. And Big Show is... Uh, Big Show might be a bad guy, actually. Brock might be a good guy. So I think Rock actually might be the only bad guy in the match. But again, they're not using the real storyline, so I guess it doesn't matter. The heel and the face and all that. That's just like that's always something you would know from watching at the exact time. But it's not really a good deal for the game itself. Uh, I thought finishers were very hard to pull off in the first game, WWF Raw. In this game, they're not. You build up the momentum and then you get your finisher. Uh, it's not a big deal. Momentum and we should finish it off. Boom. Logan comes in and he went for me, but I already pinned him, so it doesn't matter. Boom, match over. My work is done. Now I could just sim through all the other matches. If I don't sim through them, I don't have the option to play them. So that's why it just makes sense to sim through, because you're literally just watching the match. You're not going to go to interfere, 
you have to pre-select that. If you want to interfere in a match, um, then you have to do it. You can't play the other matches regardless. But if you wanted to interfere, you have to pre-select it in that first screen. Because once you're on the actual card, uh, you don't have that option. So, uh, yeah. And I'm, after this, I'm going to just jump to Exhibition just to show you what I did with Triple H as an example of how you can customize the uh, attires. Um, and then that'll be it for this episode of this particular uh, game. Uh, I will be doing more videos about this game as I try other modes and do other stuff with the game. Um, let's see, just it's funny they, that they don't have Brock, I mean, they don't have Goldberg's black and white attire as his baseline, but it's in it's in the background video that's playing. Uh, just like another minor note. So I guess just me doing a, a little bit of a wrestling nerd, noticing that. Uh, through, blah blah blah. Ugh, all right, let's go. How many matches we got left? I wish you could just send the card, but they don't let you do that. Shawn Michaels defeats the Undertaker. Wow, all right. Taker did the honors, huh? Triple H versus Rob Van Dam. Oh, I should have been Triple H. I wish I knew this because then uh, I would have loved to have the title match. Um, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I can back out. Yes, I'm gonna save it. Saving it to the Xbox console. Again, I am playing this on the Xbox 360. Um, it is purely backwards compatible. You put the disc in, that's it. Just like NFL 2K5, just like NHL. 2K5, just like ESPN Major League Baseball, 2K4, and many other great games that were on the OG Xbox. There's nothing to do. You put the disc in, and that's it. Um, so here we go. Exhibition. Uh, I will just do... I'll just do a hardcore match. Just do one-on-one. -on -one. Do Triple H, and you see here change appearance. See how that wasn't an option in that season? You hit that button, appearance two shows up next to his weight. I select it. Now I'm Triple H, and I'll go ahead and fight. Uh, fight. Should I fight? I can fight the women. They don't have any gender roles in this game. Uh, I fight Billy Kidd. I always a Billy Kidd. Don't put him in the game. Uh, Earl Hebner's the ref. Interference, I'll leave it off. Uh, let's do No Mercy, since I just said no. And then, because I selected a second attire, um, and, oh, that's the other thing. So I made this attire. His attire for this game was his Evolution button-down shirt and pants, and I changed it to the jean jacket along with uh, jeans and regular shoes. So I made him look like the 2001-2002 Triple H, but in this game, a great touch is Triple H, his second attire, he has a totally different look. He has blonder hair with its slicked back and a ponytail instead of having the, the long hair. So they really go through the detail on some of these characters of making them look different in their other attire. And here's another cool touch. You can select a weapon for the wrestler that he comes out with in his entrance music. So I selected the sledgehammer, which goes with the era, especially when you wear the jean jacket. So when I play as Triple H second attire, uh, and I actually did it for the first attire too, which I also altered a little bit. I just gave him straight black chunks. Um, but when I give him, when I select the attire, now I have him coming out as this Triple H with the sledgehammer. And he's going to have the sledgehammer to start the match. So the sledgehammer doesn't even go away. That is a great touch by this game. So you're really, you really get the feel of what it's like to play as Triple H. Because you're coming out with the second attire, which is totally different from the first. And then even though he throws it away, when I start the match, 
I have the sledgehammer. Now, they don't even do the full entrance here, which is also a little weird. Uh, entrances and, and, and exits, they just don't go through the whole thing for some reason. Um, I guess because they, they had so much room and they start it from the beginning and do it at one pace. Here comes the pain and shut your mouth. They skip from the middle to like the end a little bit. Um, but anyway, here comes... Uh, I'll just skip Billy Kidman's entrance. And now you see I have the sledgehammer. And of course, and oh yeah, okay. boom. And then if you go, if you hold the hold the button, you drop down when you hit him with it, which is a much more devastating shot. Look at that shot, man. Oof, oof, oof. Oh man, he's already in the blue. See, he's already hurting now. He's already hurting now. Boom. Now I got him down. Now I beat his ass after I nailed him with that sledgehammer, bro. He is in trouble now. Oh man, look at those shots. Huh? The game, boy, the game. Man. No Earl Hebner doesn't like that. Nothing you can do about it, though. Shut up, Earl. Oh, man, he's hurting. Oh, I think I got both of them on that one. Dropped a knee on him. You don't even know where he is now. Yeah, buddy. Oh, chuck it him out. And I will say, oh, wow, he submitted. Oh, my God. Wow. The sledgehammer, bro. <laughs> All about the game and how you play it. One minute, 49 seconds in. I just literally beat the hell out of him with the sledgehammer and he tapped out on this simple choke. It's not even like usually a finishing maneuver. So that is a perfect example of WWE Raw 2. Um, wow, what can I say? That is pretty cool. But I, you give the game credit, like it's the same thing when you play Hell in a Cell in this game. Uh, one of the matches I did, I threw a guy off the top of the cell. He actually fell through the table and they ended the match. Like, that was it. Like, the game, there's some parts of this game where hit detection feels more realistic than some of the newer games. The fact that, like, that ended the match, even just there. I mean, I beat the hell out of him with the sledgehammer. He tapped out on a choke. He's not a submission wrestler. So he got him to tap out because I beat the hell out of him with the sledgehammer. Um, so, you know, credit, credit owed where credit is due. Um, it, it's just really, really good stuff. So again, that's WWE Raw 2. Let me get this thing uh, posted, and there's a couple other games that I'll be posting, you know, over, over the next day or so. But I wanted to get this out there. Check out my other video on NFL 2K5. I'll be doing more on that one as well. Um, but this is another, I call it a hidden gem, because it's really not one that gets a lot of attention. Uh, WWE Raw 2, for the Xbox original, again, it is playable on the 360. Without any altercations or modifications, you just put the disc in and it will work just fine. So thank you for watching again. Appreciate it as always. Uh, enjoy and look forward to seeing you once again here in the Corner Arcade.